Oh, Vice Magazine, after just recently getting out of the cave to find out that games have female characters, turning sushis into hamburgers, and... Um, well... What kind of pathetic diatribe that you're gonna upload next? The Invisible People, why Asians need to be represented better in video games. I... I... Uh, I'm gonna pull my Watch Dogs 2 clip. So freaking what? How is that relevant? Because he's rare? So? I don't see Indonesians in the Western gaming circle and I don't throw out my panties over that kind of shit because that's fucking pathetic. Your people not represented in games. Well, so are mine. Go cry in the corner. Boo fucking who. I really don't think this is enough. We're gonna need to dive into the article and make sure that things are just okay. Thankfully, this is not a Mary Sue article, so I don't have to add any anime girls or yaoi's as I read, and I don't want to make it a regular thing. But do your best to not latch into a nearby rope. The Prey reboot revealed as the Bethesda's E3 2016 press conference leans in, just as Morgan Wu does towards the mirror, inviting viewers to speculate on the details. The vacant space station, the unsettling routine, his increasingly bloodshot eye, but I found myself focusing on another aspect. This is an Asian character, and a protagonist at that. That's the only thing that you notice because you are an ideologue. I watched the trailer and, honestly... That's not really the thing that I noticed the most. I noticed how different it is to the original Prey and how it didn't really have those Native American spirits aspects to it. This one is a lot more horror sci-fi, which is also a main theme of the last game, but it's also a lot more focused on horror sci-fi, which is probably a good thing. The Native American aspects in the last game are a bit out of place for a game like that, which in my opinion, not horrible, but just a little out of place. Oh, and by the way, the original Prey is a criminally underrated game. There are lots of genuinely mind-fucking sceneries in there. I highly recommend you guys to check it out. The problem is that it's not on Steam, which is very unfortunate. So I'll put the links in the description where you can get the original game. Seriously, Gabe, put it on Steam already. While we currently know very little about Wu, I will confess that those first glimpses were intensely evocative. You hear it a lot because for one reason or another, some people still need to accept it. Representation matters. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Why does it matter? Uh, nobody represents my people in gaming. I don't care. Why does it matter? The only thing that representation matters to is to easily trigger snowflakes like you, who feel so insecure about their life they want their kind to be represented. This is a brilliant example of why they would coin the term destructive criticism. It's a meaningless critique being directed towards something without even a hint of how to fix it. You might be saying that the way to fix it is to include more diverse characters, in which case, you are wrong. You are so wrong. Why? Let's continue the article, shall we? Prey is not unique to this. It is hard to see standout examples of positive Asian roles in recent years. It is an obvious starting point, but Mirror's Edge's Faith has been one of the most celebrated examples of lead character diversity, despite the predictable affront and the lack of overt sexuality from the darker corners of message boards across the world. Elsewhere, Walking Mars's Dr. Ki Liang, a Chinese astrobiologist, is a quieter yet proactive lead with an autonomy that does not deny his ethnicity. Yes, he has a slight accent, and yes, he's a scientist, but neither is used to mock or accentuate his otherness. So, from this critique, I think we can extrapolate that the writer wants more females, more LGBT characters, and more people of color characters. Now, here's the problem. LGBT is not just LGBT. It's now LGBTQ2? I cannot explain this. I try to make sense of this, but if you genuinely want to know what it is, you can ask this guy. I cannot process the particular information because my brains are on the verge of... And gender, well, you know how Tumblr writes think that there are more than two genders? Well, right now it's not two genders, it's not even three. It's... 33. And some of these are fucking ridiculous. Gender non-conforming, a person who does not identify with either the male or female genders. Gender queer, an overarching term used to describe people who do not identify exclusively as either male or female. Gender fluid, a person who does not identify entirely with either the male or female genders. A gender, this literally means without gender, so a person who doesn't identify with any gender. Why aren't these people in a mental hospital? 
There's a reason faith is an oft go to example. These exceptions are extremely rare and surrounded by the continuation of widely accepted tropes. Street Fighter V's Fang portrays some of the most classically derogatory Asian stereotypes villainous, weak, conniving, effeminate, with such ferocity. It is astounding that it passed through so many eyes of Capcom without comment and continues to do so with its players. So, making a character stereotypically villainous is a bad thing? What does this Fang character say? To me, he's just a character from Street Fighter. A game with macho man, cocky, sassy, girly girl, a British super spy, insanely badass Chinese, a stereotypical wrestler, stereotypical American. Street Fighter is a game literally rife with stereotypes, and it's a popular game series that existed ever since the 80s. I just want to ask the writer in question. What are the impacts of having these particular stereotypes to the society? They don't make people more racist, they don't make people more sexist, they don't cause mass shootings, so why would you be bothered with it? And this is why you should never add diversity to your games or your movies or your comics. Because when you do, they will still complain about it. There won't be a time in which you will please these people. They will keep asking you to jump. But there will be no point in which you will jump high enough for them. So don't even try. And I'm talking to you, Brian Michael Bendis. Asians and Middle Eastern characters are placed strictly as the enemy, cannon fodder in Call of Duties and Battlefields, or minor gangs in Grand Theft Autos, without the tonic of more nuanced representation elsewhere that might quell the dehumanizing effect of social stereotypes. So what you're saying here is Asians and Middle Easterns cannot be enemies because... Let's get into some of the examples of the games mentioned here. Grand Theft Auto. Well, here's the thing. You know that Asians can be bad people too, right? Minor gangs in GTA, well, they're the most people you interact with in Chinatown Wars, including enemies. So when you say that Asians need to be represented better, how better do they need to be represented? I, are you saying that they can't be enemies, even if they're the minority of enemies you face? In Chinatown Wars... You have no choice. They will be enemies because triads exist in real life. And next is Call of Duty. I did some reading and all three modern warfare games have Russians as the villain. Advanced Warfare has Kevin Spacey. World War Call of Duty games have Nazis. I'm not too familiar with Call of Duty stories to be honest. So any of you Call of Duty experts just leave comments of how wrong this guy is. And let's be honest here. The first person who thinks that the story in Call of Duty or even Battlefield is the most important aspect of the game should be institutionalized to Arkham immediately. There's no doubt that games like Sleeping Dogs and Sega's Yakuza series display a varied array of Asian characters, but the heroes are trained martial artists, tried members, tough guys. Wait, 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 wait a second. Asian martial artists, tough guys, tried members are bad because they're stereotypical? They do go out of their way to paint with more discerning brushstokes on the sidelines of the main quest, but there are still plenty of disappointing stereotypes to be found in these games. Likewise, Koei Tecmo's Dynasty Warriors franchise. Dynasty Warriors? Dynasty Warriors? What are you gonna say about Dynasty Warriors? What are you gonna say about the game that is a part of my childhood? A game that gave me so much joy and smile for so many years. A game that is so repetitive yet so satisfying. A game that is so rife with bad voice acting and yet it adds so much joy and charm into it. What are you gonna say about a game that has given a smile to my 10 year old self? What are you gonna say about this game? There's undeniably a degree of Orientalism which can come across as a fetishization of established and outdated Asian tropes. <sighs> okay, I I've calmed down, I've calmed down, I swear. Outdated Asian tropes. <laughs> Okay, I've calmed down now, I swear. This fucking article just shit on my childhood. It's one of the worst childhood assaults, my childhood assaults, from left-wing publication ever since Salon's article on Tintin. It's not that this article says that the Nasty Warriors is crapped. I can handle that just fine. It's just that they are wrong. They are objectively wrong. You can have your opinions on the game, but at least try to represent what it is correctly. 
orientalism, fetishization of outdated tropes, in a fucking overblown historical fiction? Gee, if only the characters dress more appropriately like us civilized western fucktards. If only these people would live in the modern times drinking Starbucks while shit posting on Twitter. That would be more appropriate, right? Right? You took a game that was basically a big budget fan fiction of one of the most culturally significant Chinese literatures of all time, and your criticism of it is it's too Asian? Of all the things that you can criticize about this game, of all the things, just, wow. Your criticism is downright impossible not to mock. You want Asians to be represented, well, I don't want you to represent me. Because you clearly have absolutely no grasp or basic understanding of what you're even talking about. All you care about is your stupid identity politics and you're gonna use this platform to push your agenda. I got nothing, guys. I got absolutely nothing. The best thing I can do is to insult these people. You dirt-eating piece of slime! You scum-sucking pig! You son of a motherless goat! I'm sure that I'm not even the only one who got their childhood raped by these morons. If you want, you can share one of your biggest childhood rapes in the comment below. The issue of representation is perhaps more difficult to confront because Asians have always occupied a significant presence in the game history, culture, and production, creating the assumption of a non-issue. This motherfucker is aware of the significant presence of Asians in gaming history and quite literally says, let's make a problem out of it. You are a sad, strange little man. Why is there so little discussion around this? Maybe, just maybe, just freaking maybe, Vice Magazine. It's something that no one cares about. While the dialogue surrounding diversity is becoming increasingly widespread to exciting and brilliant results, there is a lamentable absence of discussion regarding Asians, neither celebrated during peaks of positivity and going largely unnoticed by communities passionately championing diversity in games. Again, that's because absolutely nobody cares about this problem. And now, I guess I'm part of the problem for not discussing it. Is that what you're trying to imply, Vice Magazine? Right? Right? You are the kind of club toting, raw meat eating, me Tarzan, you Jane, and big ball bubblehead that can only count to ten if he's barefoot or wearing sandals. This absence of recognition can be seen in other species. Most of us know African America or Puerto Rican Miles Morales as the new Spider Man, Pakistani American Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel, and presumably African American Willie Williams as the forthcoming new Iron Man. Woman, man, whatever. But from what I saw, at least, there was a lot less social media buzz when Amadeus Cho became the totally awesome Hulk in 2015. That entire paragraph is literally this guy asking Marvel Senpai to notice him. You are a boring F star star cunt. This quiet isn't a sign of acceptance. It does not denote the absence of the problem, but an unwillingness to show awareness and forge a conversation around it. For as long as this absence is felt, there is no drive for improvement. There are bigger problems to deal with, or it's worse for women, or Asians have it good enough, or it's up to them to speak about it, are claims that I've witnessed far too often for comfort. All are statements with varying degrees of accuracy and spoken not as resolution, but evasion. There is always an excuse for passivity, a reason not to care or confront. It's not a reason to care, because you made it a reason to care. You made it a problem. Not a lot of people make it a problem because you made it one. You're the one making this an issue. You're the one making this a big deal. You have things to complain about, and you have the rights to complain about them, but I don't see how the things that you're complaining fix this massive industry. I really don't. From this, the litany of microaggressions of denigrating stereotypes considered acceptable to peddle will permeate unabated. In general terms, Asian women will continue to be prices or fillinists. Asian men continue to be faceless martial artists or emasculated. Game makers, producers, and arguably most important, its audience have tremendous power to either assert these stereotypes or resist them. Mirror's Edge and its sequel, Walking Mars, and hopefully Prey, are steps to deliver a much needed change in representation. Sleeping dogs have Asian as martial artists and emasculated men, and that's way too stereotypical. So, what do you want us to change that? How is changing that making the game better? Don't even get me started on the Nasty Warriors. Thanks for scarring my childhood, you pricks. Frankly, I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. This isn't a call 
to divert attention, or a protest against other minorities that have it better. A falsehood I'm cautious to avoid. There is space within all of games culture to confront representation of the trans community, abuse of women in tech industries, and a desire to see diversity of storytelling that reflects gaming's audience, among others. But perhaps it's time to realize that there has long been an invisible people who also need this conversation to happen to them. I sincerely hope to see this happen too. Putting aside the last sentence, which is quite literally senpai notice me, senpai notice me. Hello, Vice Magazine. This is an 18 year old Asian speaking. And this guy wants to look at you. Get her. Look, look at him. There's your this YouTube. Come on. I think what you really mean as invincible people right here is people talking about representation of Asians in the media, which in that case, you're pretty much in the minority there. We Asian geeks or nerds or whatever you want to coin the term gamers don't really care about whether or not we are represented in the video game industry or in the video game realms. All that we care about is whether or not the video games or the movies or the TV series that we consume are gonna be any good. That's what geeks and nerds do. They talk about movies, they talk about video games, they don't talk about representation. And you bringing in discussion of whether or not Asians should be represented in the video game realms only detract the overall conversation into nothing more than stupid identity politics. This article is... This article is stupid as hell. You know what, I'm just gonna take a break for a moment and play some video. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.